All right, let's get it. Now we're going to be talking about Raptor Cause. So stories of Elon, we're back. Don't get your feelings hurt out here, okay? So let's get into it. A few weeks after the surge, Musk turned his attention to the Raptor engine that would power Starship. Starship, guys, this is what we're talking about. Fueled by super cool liquid, methane, and liquid oxygen, it had more than twice the thrust of a Falcon 9 engine. This meant that Starship would have more thrust than any rocket in history. But the Raptor engine would not get humanity to Mars simply by being powerful. It would also have to be manufactured by hundreds at a reasonable cost. And each Starship would need about 40 of them. It must envision a fleet of scores of Starships. Raptor was too complex to be mass manufactured. It looked like a spaghetti bush. Soon, in August 2021, Musk fired the person in charge of the design and personally took on the title of Vice President of Propulsion. His goal was to set and get the cost of each engine to around $200,000, a tenth of what it then cost. And so SpaceX is a complicated thing. It's not simple, okay? And we could have just kind of relaxed on the Falcon 9, kind of what you see is launching right there. But to do the Starship, it's a heavier payload. And so it's very interesting that Musk is deciding to kind of push for it. And of course, this is classical Musk, and he's needing to fire the people, so get them out of there. And so G shot with Scott uh, Shotwell and SpaceX CFO BJ arranged a small meeting one afternoon uh, with the person in finance department in charge of the overseeing Raptor costs and walked a good-looking young financial analysis named Hughes, whose slightly preppy appearance was mitigated by his long hair and his ponytail. He had never directly interacted with Musk and wasn't even sure Musk knew his name. So he was nervous. <laughs> and Musk began on his lecture. I want to be super clear, he began. You are not the friend of the engineers. You are the judge. If you're popular among the engineers, this is bad. If you don't step on toes, you will be fired. Is that clear? He st 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 stuttered a bit, but he understood. Ever since he flew back from Russia and calculated the cost of building his own rocket, Musk had deployed what he called the idiot index. Now pay attention. You might ask, what is the idiot index? And I think this is something useful in any company, but let's go. That was the ratio of the total cost of a component to the cost of its raw materials. And something with a high idiot index, say a component that costs $1,000 when the aluminum that composed it cost only $100. So he's just kind of attempting to see what the markup is, right? Like if the raw material for that product only costs $100, but it costs $1,000 for us to buy it, and the idiot index is high on that, and was likely to have a design that was too complex or a manufacturing process that was too inefficient. So that could be some of the reasons why the product, even though the raw materials cost $100, but the product costs $1,000. As Musk put it, if the ratio is high, you're an idiot. And so he looks for this, and this is the way he kind of measured things. Especially, you could be getting robbed off. There's a lot of aerospace companies on all these engineer companies. They're trying to rip people off. So Musk is just trying to protect itself at all times. <laughs> and what are the best parts in Raptors as judged by the idiot index? Musk acts. And this is the huge, the pretty guy. The pretty boy said, I'm not sure. And he responded, I will find out. And this was not good. Musk face hardened and shot well shot me a worried glance. People in the room was like, uh-oh, you better be effing sure in the future you know these things of the top of your head, Musk asked and said, and if you ever come into a meeting and don't know what are the idiot parts, then your resignation will be accepted immediately. He spoke in a monotone and showed no emotion. How can you fucking not know what the best and the worst parts are. This is what my said. Don't get mad at me, enormous. <laughs> and I know the cost chart down to the smallest part, Hughes quietly said. I just don't know the cost of the raw materials of those parts. What are the worst five parts then? So, uh-oh, Musk is challenging him. 
and it must demand it. And Hughes looked at his computer to see if he could calculate the answer. No, don't look at your screen, Must said. Just name one. You should know the problematic parts. There's a half nozzle jacket, Hughes offered tentatively. I think it costs $13,000. It's made of a single piece of steel, Must said. Now questioning him. How much does the material cost, boy? He didn't say that. I said that. <laughs> I think a few thousand dollars, he replied. And Must knew the answer. No, it's just steel. It's about 200 bucks. You have very badly failed. And if you don't improve, your resignation will be accepted. This meeting is over. Done. Ooh, must lay down the law, boy. Down the law. You guys got to be careful. You know think you could just fly under the radar. Must is there. And so when H came into the conference room the next day for the follow-up presentation, Must showed no sign that he remembered reaming him out. Guys, I don't think people take it like Elon just keeps moving. OK, stop taking it personal. OK, and we are looking at the 20 worst idiot index parts. H began as he pulled out the slide. There's definitely some themes other than writing a pencil. He was able to hide his nervousness, nervousness and must listen quietly and nodded. It's mainly the part that required a lot of high precision machining like pumps and fairings and then hughes continued we need to cut as much as the machining out as possible it must started smiling and this has been one of his themes he asked a few specific questions about the use of copper and the best way to do the stamping and the hole punching it was no longer a quiz or a confirmation must was interested in figuring out the answer you see once normies start doing what they're supposed to do must just moves on right we are looking at some of the techniques that automakers use to keep their costs down, Hughes continued. He also had a slide that showed how they were applying must algorithm to each of the parts. And there were columns that showed what requirements had been questioned, what parts had been deleted, and the name of the specific person in charge of each component. We should ask each of them to see if they can get the cost of their part down by 80 percent must suggest it and if they can't we should consider asking them to step aside if someone else might be able to do so so renegotiating with suppliers and vendors seeing if they can cause or cut down their cost and figure it out this is how we go about it and of course hughes had a good example of attempting to get the stamping out of the machining process fixed so that the product can cost less right and by the end of the meeting and they had a road map to get the cost of the engine down from 2 million to 200,000 in 12 months. See that? See what you can accomplish? Look at that rocket lifting off. You see what you can accomplish? Right? Money management. The guy didn't know. He was slipping. He was being lazy, okay? And Elon came in and tightened him up a bit, you know? He got to take a couple jabs and, and, and whoop and open up a can of whoop ass on some people. But don't take it personal, normies, all right? I worked in the Marine Corps. You couldn't take a lot personal, you know? Things would happen, and you just got to move on. So don't don't get sensitive, okay? Shout out to this guy. He's going to be showing some rockets on the side, okay? By the end of the meeting, and they had a roadmap to get the cost down from $2 million to 200000 in 12 months. That's good, guys. And after these meetings, I pulled Shotwell aside and asked her for assessment of how much had treated Hughes. And she cares about the human dimension that Musk ignores. And she lowered her voice and said, I heard that Lucas lost his first child about seven weeks ago, she said. He and his wife had a baby with birth problems who was never able to leave the hospital. And that's why she felt Hughes had been flustered and less prepared than usual. Given that Musk had a similar experience when his first baby died, uh, sending him into months of grief, I suggest to Shotwell, and then he should be able to relate. I still need to tell Elon, she said. Now, look, this guy comes up with these assumptions. It's not right. Uh, he lost a baby and da da da. That's why he wasn't prepared. Look, Normie's always coming up with some excuses. He was at work. Elon was doing business. All right. 
Everybody's not putting out the pregnancy data to the whole company every two seconds, okay? <laughs> so therefore, Elon doesn't even know. And if he did, I don't know if he would have not reamed in him too for not knowing what he needed to know. The guy didn't know in the story. But of course, here goes the author looking to backstab him and talking to Shotwell and, oh my gosh, why did he do it like that? Let's continue, man. Ridiculous, guys. I tell you, these people are cancers inside your company, man. Always stirring up drama. I didn't mention this to Mus when I talked to him later that day because Shotwell told me it was confidential. But I did ask him whether he was thought it was too harsh on Hakes. And Mus stared bit blankly as if he wasn't sure what I was referring to. After some silence, he answered in an abstract. Quote, I give people hardcore feedback, mostly accurate, and I try not to do it in a way that is ad hominem, he says. I try to criticize the action, not the person. We all make mistakes, and what matters is whether a person has a good feedback loop, can seek criticism from others, and can improve. Physics does not care about hurt feelings. It cares about whether you got the rocket right. Come on, Elon schooling these guys i think this guy's job was in something like the media before too the author so he never had to be right <laughs> you dig he never had to be right it don't matter they they cover a story they're completely wrong okay. who cares at the end of the day right weapons of mass destruction who cares you ain't got to be right you know you just report the news and hey whatever let the chips fall where they may and so i don't expect this guy the author Walter Isaacson to understand in any shape, form, or fashion. But guys, I come from the Marine Corps. Stop being so goddamn sensitive, okay? Employees, employers back in the days didn't even care if you were alive. They would just be like, all right, we'll get somebody else. There's so many people to hire. We don't care. Like, companies care way more. Um, people are being paid very good at SpaceX. Not the best in the galaxy, but definitely the best in the world. The top 5% of all human beings being paid the best, right? You got yelled at once because you were wrong. And then after that in the book, Elon Musk saw the next presentation, didn't say a thing. Asked him questions and referred to him the next time. That's it, guys. Don't take it personal. Don't cry. Nobody's got sympathy for you. All right? We're going out here and trying to do something great. And doing something great is going to come with a little conflict, turbulence. It happens. Put your big girl panties on and your big boy panties on. And if you want to be a part of the frontier, let's make it happen. Everybody always sits back. Well, I wouldn't have said that. I wouldn't have did this. I would have been nicer. I would have kissed a couple of babies. I would have took a couple dogs for a walk. And is that going to get the rocket into space? No. Does the guy need to know what the idiot index is? Yes. Is that going to allow us to beat the Russians? No. Is that going to allow us to beat the Chinese? No. Most people are not willing to do the hard, heavy lifting. Okay, we got Elon. Okay, we got people like me. Okay, we got some people that are willing to do it. But a lot of people are not willing to do it. But these conditions in which people work today, one time an employer yelling, is nothing. You see the type of things that SpaceX is doing. You see the type of inventions engineers are making, and they're being pushed to their limits because of Elon. Elon is the leader that's making it happen. None of these guys were doing it without his culture, and without his business in which he created, SpaceX, Tesla, and none of them will not do it, even with those businesses, without Elon pushing them beyond their limits. So much respects to Elon and everybody involved. Everybody loves to hate about his management style and his skills and what he said to this person and how their feelings got hurt. But nobody wants to talk about the results on the screen. You want to spend more time talking about somebody's feelings at once upon a time. And the guy goes in the book and talks about another person, but I'll leave that to later. Another, another person cried once upon a time. Another person wants to have work-life balance. And then he was like, oh, well, there's no work-life balance. And he leaves. Okay, congratulations. You know, go have your work-life balance. You spent time. He probably owns shares. He's probably doing well on that. So <laughs> it's a win-win, guy. 
and you were a part of something great. But I don't remember crying about any drill instructor or any sergeant or any commandant, commander, general yelling at me, staff sergeant, private first class, whatever the case may be. Get over that. Grow up. You're a grown adult and a man and a human. Grow up, Peter Pan, and let's get busy. Shout outs to everybody. Another great story of Elon. And sometimes I'm I'm hoping that we could find inside this book a story that's positive. But this guy, Walter, man, he's a hater. Elon, you had a hater following you for that many years? Jeez Louise, collecting dirt on you, doggy. Man, he he stood blankantly and he didn't know how to. He almost forgot. He's crazy. He's insane. He's a demon. He's dark. Like, Walter, who made you a psychiatrist and a psychologist? That's what I'm saying, homie. Aren't you a goddamn author? And weren't you a CEO of a goddamn propaganda machine? Like, who? Okay, you can do propaganda. But who made you a psychiatrist and psychologist to say who's got mental conditions and their state of their mindset? Like, normies, bro. Normies out here prescribing people with medical conditions got no certificates. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he fired somebody. He's dark. But that person was over there eating beans and rice, lunching. Come on, man. If you don't know what the idiot index is, then get about my company. You right, man. Fast to fire, slow to hire. Shout outs to Elon. Keep up the great work. Stories of Elon. I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Now watch these miracles land.